Hi guys, Todd here again with RV Adventures, Todd's World. And today I've got a new product to share with you today. I've been getting a few questions about this since we've been traveling in our RV. Actually, even the Tiffin that we had since 2020. And we just recently traded the Tiffin in for this Thor Outlaw toy hauler motorhome uh, earlier this year. And I was researching this. Uh, I wanted to get a brand new one. I've tried several in the past that I had to kind of makeshift to fit on a flat motorhome windshield, which is one of the first obstacles that you're gonna have when you go researching for dash cameras for your motorhome, when you have the flat, the large flat windshield, straight up and down. Most of those dash cams uh, I've seen on the market, they're like angled for uh, like vehicles, like auto, regular automobiles and trucks with the slanted windshield, so they only tilt the camera up so high and when you t uh, mount those type flat to this flat windshield they'll be pointing down at the street because they don't point up high enough so that's the first obstacle you're going to run into and maybe you'll like this camera as much as i do and you won't have to run into any of that unneeded research that i had to go through so this is the gku d600 4k dash camera and i say 4k but it, it's got the option to be 4K, but if you buy it with the two cameras, the front dash cam and the rear camera, and you're recording both, then it's 2.5K uh, video. And 2.5K, you're gonna think that that's 4K. Stick around, I'm gonna go over all the features or most of the features that I feel are important uh, in this video coming up. Okay, and we're back with the GKU D600, and uh, it's a nice, really compact dash camera, and it's got it's packed filled with options. One thing that I found important to me with a dash camera is how can I get the video off? Me as a uh, you know a video maker, YouTube channel guy, and I want to share some of my dash cams. Most people have a dash cam just for protection from accidents or mishaps that happen while driving. But for me, I kind of use it in my footage a lot of times. So I was looking for easy ways and methods uh, of cameras where you can pull the video off easily. Now, the easiest way would be to just pull the dash cam card out, which I do most of the time. The SD card plugs into the side of the dash cam. And the dash cam is right up here on the bottom of my dashboard right there. And you'll say, hey Todd, why don't you mount it up top to get full vision? Well, I don't know if you can see it in the video. I did have it up and I'll show you a picture or a video, short video clip of what it looked like up here. But see that uh, thick line of blue tint on the top of the windshield? I had it up here in the corner. I thought it would be out of the way, out of my vision and get you know a really clear view of the, the roads ahead being up that high but the tent interferes. If you don't mind the tent, it's fine. It's still a good video picture, but I decided to move mine down so I can see the true uh, version of what's happened in front of me on playback, especially because I was gonna use the video footage, a lot of it in my videos. And then you've got the second camera, which is the rear camera. If you wanna mount it to the rear of your RV, but my RV, it's like 40 foot long and I'd have to add some additional cable and cords to reach back there. I really didn't want a rear view camera, not at this point. So I was using it as a side uh, window mount camera right here. And then I decided, you know what? 
it does have a built-in mic so i mounted it to this uh this little dash anchor right here it's wiggling right now this is it right here this is the gku the rear camera and i mounted to here and it's actually on a magnetic clip that i purchased i'll leave the link to all of this stuff in my video description if you're interested in this type of setup unique setup that i've done so this is magnetic here and it's got like a little gopro mount right here that i modified the camera to fit into and what i use this for now is a dash cam pointing at me and my wife sitting in our driver and passenger seat when we're going down the road this camera i can angle it toward us and we can narrate and have our images our video images you know talking to the audience and it might be good for if you want it like this if you do get an accident you can get the uh, initial impression that you and the passenger had as you saw the accident coming at you and what your response was so either way this is a good option a good spot to put the rear view dash cam part so also i'm gonna hit you with a big surprise here i just in this rv i installed an android radio so this is my android radio right here i've got the gku playing back live as we speak this is the front view and if i toggle it right here on the screen it will toggle to the rear view camera right here hi guys live so i just discovered that uh just the other day when i was setting it up i was like it comes with an app it's called the jarvis cam app and i got it installed on my smartphone and we're going to go over that next that's how you can pull videos off and and see what kind of footage you have to review it and stuff like that but this is cool it plays on my android screen here and actually i could probably download direct from here as well because this is the jarvis cam app as well on this android device screen all right so let's get another view of how i have this uh gku d600 set up um, i've got it right up here in the front corner these cameras work with my android radio they're like a dvr system that i'm trying out right now those are pretty cool too but maybe i'll talk about them in another video this one is the fantastic one this is the gku model d600 i got it mounted right down there two cords go in one cord comes back to here the rear camera i've got the additional cable tucked in underneath this dashboard right here that's velcroed down so i have additional cable if i didn't want to run it back somewhere else but for now i don't and then the other cord there uh, that plugs in at the top that is the power cable and that's just the USB-C and that plugs in actually I think actually that one I installed a uh, like a cigarette lighter PowerPoint adapter and I just wrapped the cord up underneath here and plugged it into the accessory adapter I installed here on my accessory power line so that comes on I don't even have to think about that that comes on when I turn the ignition key on and it'll give you an announcement that it's turning on I'll show you right here let's go ahead and turn it off okay it's off now we're gonna go ahead and turn act like we're gonna start the car turn the ignition on start recording. it tells you it started recording so it's pretty cool having a dash cam when you have these views up here and you want to share it with other people if you're the sharing type person who wants to share videos you can always get footage off of the sd card right there or from the uh, jarvis cam app which i'll show you in a minute <clears throat> and i believe it supports a up to a 256 gigabyte sd card so you can store a lot before it starts recording over top of the oldest clips Okay, let's go over what the GKU D600 dash cam app does for you. And the app name is called Jarvis Cam. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up on my smart phone screen now. We'll open up Jarvis Cam. And then it has to connect to your camera. So you'll have to have your 
ignition switch on when you want to try to connect to it to get any footage off or to review footage. So I'm going to go within the app here and the app name is Jarvis Cam. You can download it on the Android or iPhone store. So I've got it right here in my, in my Outlaw apps. I'm going to connect to Jarvis. And what you have to do is make sure your ignition key is on so that will power up the dash cam because you need that powered on to connect to it within the app. So I'm going to select connect. There's our D600. Select connect and then it opens up your Wi-Fi screen and you want to connect directly to the dash cam now and I see it list here, listed here GKU dash cam I'm gonna select that to connect to and I just have a simple password let's see maybe it remembered it okay I'm gonna go ahead and go back now into the app when I go back and now it says it's connected so We'll get the live video screen right here and you can actually also you can rotate the screen as well and get a bigger picture and we can also go into if we do the little switch app at the bottom left of the picture we can switch cameras so we can switch to our rear camera right now and that's the one that's facing me right now so we can switch that and go back we'll go to our main dash camera and we can actually manually take pictures right here by selecting the camera it tells you right there the picture was success and you can actually start uh, manually recording right here if you want and it will tell you verbally as well okay And you can go to your, uh, let's go into camera settings first, see what that has to offer. So we got sound recording. I like the sound recording because like I said, I use the rear cam to pick up voices. I, and I believe the microphone's actually in the front camera, but it, it records the voicing over both video pictures. And then you have the speaker volume right here, so you can hear its response if it's starting recording or stopping recording. You can set the resolution here. If you go to resolution, uh, you can get 1080p and 1080p in both cameras. I'm getting 2.5K in the front one and 1080p in this rear camera right here that I have. So like I said, it's not an actual 4K camera unless you just remove this camera and then it's 4K if you just want to use the front dash cam. You can set it for 4K. And what else do we got? Loop recording duration. Now this is set uh, one, two, or three minutes. I'm actually going to change this to three minutes. That's how long, you know, if you save video clips, which it will automatically. I like to save them in little chunks, three minute chunks. So if you're looking for a spot, you travel through during the uh, earlier part of the day you just have to review little three minute uh, video chunks and you can make it easier uh, by sizing it smaller one or two minutes okay and that's what that is uh, time mark I like the time mark on there this you can turn on or off I do like the time mark because that's where you're gonna try to figure out what happened at what time so keep the time mark on there rear camera flip left or right that's if you mount it to the rear and you want it to look like it is in a rear view mirror you can flip this camera left to right and collision detection sensitivity for driving it will automatically lock a clip if it triggers like a bump or something like you crashed into something or something crashed into you it will lock in the video clip on your uh, Jarvis cam app so keep that on for safety reasons and for security for yourself and then there's a Wi-Fi name password and your SD card uh, looks like I only got about a 60 gigabyte card in mine currently and that's about it we'll go back now we'll check out the camera files and that's the bottom left of the app go ahead and select that these are all the clips here see all the looped clips and some of these are recent you see me uh, right here in the 
this uh, rear view camera right here. So you can go through these and they're uh, organized by date when they were taken. Now I've been sitting here for about a week at my mother-in-law's house in Canada. So we haven't been doing a lot of driving, but I'm gonna give you a few clips uh, to show you some of the adventures, the roads, the unique roads we've been on to get here at this spot last week when we arrived. Those views, if, uh, take a look at them. Those views are so cool. I've got some on here, the clips, and I'll play those back for you and we can watch them right now. Just the crystal clear view of those roads and the, the landscape and the, sometimes we see you know a view of the water on the road and stuff and it, it captures all this from the GKU camera and the, the views are awesome that you get from this camera. You would think that it is actually recording in 4K even though none of these clips were recorded in 4K because I had the rear camera up here too. And a matter of fact, I'll show you some of the inside camera as well. A very crisp, clear picture, even though that was set at recording at 1080p, the inside camera. You see me and my wife or whatever. Uh, very clear in the video picture that it records for you. I'm so happy with this camera. There is one downfall I'm going to share with you in just a moment when we uh, get to the end of this video. But anyway, let's go back. Here's all the clips now. And I wanted to show you, uh, you can go to locked clips. I don't have any that were locked, like if we got into a collision or something, or you can manually lock them if you want. Uh, let's see, I'll just select this video right here on the screen here. This is one of our drives that we had coming here. And it's gonna take a minute to load because we are recording at the same time time here so if I like this clip see at the bottom I can take a screenshot of it I can delete the clip or I can download it so if I go to the left bottom it says download I'll select see now the video clip is loading I can select download and it's going to begin to download within a file of this Jarvis cam app and then you can retrieve that video file it's a .ts file. You can uh, find that file. I'm going to go ahead and cancel download right now. But that's how you can download directly from the Jarvis app, which is a cool feature that not many other cameras have. Actually, not many of the cameras I've tried out have an app that you can connect to it directly like this. Usually, it's like you, it, everything's on the SD card. You get to pull the SD card out. That's the only way you can access what the camera did or whatever. Or they have a really small touch screen on the camera and you can't hardly see it. And especially in a motorhome like this, you can't reach forward to the little touch screen on your dash cam. It's not gonna work for you. All right, before I go into that, I wanna show you a short video clip of how the, the GKU D600 looked when I had it mounted up here in the tinted strip. I'll play a clip of that and you see here that it's a beautiful picture and everything but it's all tinted blue and you're like oh, what's wrong with the why is it the video is it corrupted or something it's got a blue tint to everything in the video and the the video is beautiful and all but it's it's tinted blue so watch out for that when you go mounting it even if you're mounting it in a regular uh, in your regular uh, vehicle which this I would actually recommend for any vehicle. Uh, watch out if you mount it up near your mirror or something, your regular vehicle, you're gonna have that tint strip and it's gonna kind of distort the true uh, vision that you had going down the road because it's gonna be tinted in your video playback. So I mount mine down here and it's plenty enough to see the whole entire road as you can, as we saw in the videos that I captured. So I like that. Now the one drawback before we end this video on the GKU dash camera, the one thing that I ran into that uh, I didn't necessarily like, and that is the, the recording clips. GKU saves them as a .ts file. And a .ts file is not recognized by many, uh, I say, editing programs, or at least not by mine. I use Sony Vegas editing software to make all my YouTube videos, and I threw these 
.ts files in them, and you've seen some because I just showed them to you now. But what I had to do is I had to convert them into a .mp4 file before I could use them in my editing software. So you might want to check if you're going to buy this exclusively for your uh, YouTube videos and you want a nice dash cam like this that makes those nice crisp video recordings and it fits to a flat windshield on a motorhome, then check your editing software and see if it, if it knows and can discover and playback .ts files. That's the only uh, issue I had with this camera. Otherwise, it's perfect. But I, I found a way around it. I had to uh, download another program, which does it for me for free. It changes, uh, it converts .ts files to .mp4 files. And then I, you know, I saved them in a file for my, uh, for my video editing. And I can include these video images with you on my YouTube channel. So it works out either way. It's just one other step it added to me because my Sony Vegas software does not really play well with .ts files. So guys, again, thank you for tuning in to another one of my videos. I really enjoy having you on each and every one of my videos. And I hope that you are subscribed to both of my channels, TW Home Show and RB Adventures Todd's World. Because when I'm on the road, you might not see too many things on TW Home Show, which is stuff I do around my home in Florida, modifications, projects, smart home stuff, landscaping, lighting, all kinds of organization uh, videos and stuff like that around the garage and around the home. Make sure you subscribe to TW Home Show and RB Adventures Todd's World so you can see me on the road as well. So you don't miss any of the cool, fun videos that I put out for you guys. And uh, make sure you leave a thumbs up, like this video. And I appreciate all the followers and subscribers. And I'll see you guys on the next one.